Hello friends, welcome back to Home Sense with Nell. Today I want to talk to you about something that I thought was so intimidating that I kept putting it off, and that is testing my soil. I finally got up the nerve to order this rapid test soil test kit from Amazon, and once I opened the package, I realized how simple this process actually is, and I'm going to share it with you today. But first, if you like DIYs, home decor, product hauls, gardening, and everything related to making your home your sanctuary on a budget, please subscribe. Okay guys, this test allows you to analyze your soil. You can measure pH, you can measure NPK, which is nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium, or in this case, potash. And what's great about this test is after you get your results, the test will give you this reference list for pH, which lets you know the ideal levels for whatever you, it is you are trying to grow. So in my case, I really love blueberries and I've been unsuccessful for two seasons growing blueberries and I realized it's because my pH was completely off. So the first step to analyzing your soil is to go ahead and collect a dirt sample or a soil sample about four inches below the surface. That's what's recommended if you're gonna grow um, vegetables. I also collected a little bit of peat moss, which I'm gonna show you how to use later. And here's the test kit. You have um, very precise and simple instructions. You have four different comparator cases and you have color-coded capsules and a pipette. So the orange is for the potassium or the K, also known as potash. The blue is for phosphorus and the purple is for nitrogen. And the green is for testing your pH. Excuse my little dog in the background. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> so the first step is to go ahead and put some soil into your comparator case uh, on the left side up to the fill line. It's gonna be less than a teaspoon. And after that, you're gonna go ahead and empty the contents of this capsule right on top of the soil. If you can pull it apart, that's great. If not, go ahead and use scissors to clip it. The next step would be to use your pipette to add a small amount of water right on top of the capsule ingredients and the soil. The directions say that distilled water is preferable, but I didn't have that, so I went ahead and used tap water. And you're gonna fill that up until the second fill line. Make sure the cap is on really tightly and go ahead and shake it for about 20 to 30 seconds. After that, the soil will settle and after about a minute, you'll be able to read the test accurately. I think my soil is reading at somewhere between 7.0 and 7.5, so it's definitely a little alkaline. Now according to the reference guide within the kit, blueberries like a pH of about four to six. So I definitely need to, t need to lower my uh, pH if I wanna have a successful blueberry crop. And an easy way to do that is to add peat moss to your soil. So to demonstrate that, um, I just took about half, I did a second test with about half soil and half peat moss so that you can see the results. 
Now peat moss doesn't add any nutritional value to your soil, but it does add a little bit of aeration. It loosens up the soil a little bit and it also lowers the pH. So again, I filled the test comparator tube up to the fill line. I added water. And lastly, I added the contents of one of the green capsules on top of the water. I forgot to add it earlier. So as you can see, adding a little bit of peat moss definitely gave us a more acidic soil that would be better a better environment for growing blueberries, uh, citrus, and some other plants such as azaleas and camellias. I would say this one is now at about a pH of 6, which is the upper limit for blueberries. Now the second part of the test requires collecting about one cup of soil from about four to six inches down and mixing that with about five cups of water. I have a two third cup measuring cup so I'm gonna add one full cup and then half. And this is what you need to do in order to do the analysis for the N, P, and K. So here you see me adding about five cups of water. Again, the instructions say that uh, distilled water or bottled water is preferable, but if you don't have that, to just go ahead and use tap water. And next, I went ahead and mixed my solution. And I let it sit for 24 hours until I could get the water as clear as possible. This is what my water looked like after stirring for about a minute and allowing it to settle for about a minute also. All in all, I allowed my water to settle for 24 hours in order to get it as clear as I possibly could. I just love sitting in the garden and watching the hummingbirds. Okay, fast forward 24 hours and here we are, ready to begin our testing. So the nitrogen is very important in our gardens. Nitrogen gives your plants the energy they need to grow and it is a component of chlorophyll, so it's very important. In order to test our soil for nitrogen, you simply take some of that water that's been sitting and you fill up the left side of the comparator tube And then you add the contents of the color coordinating purple capsule into that water. And oops, I did spill a little bit, so I just might end up repeating this test, but I wanted to go through with it and show you how to do it. So after you add the soil, or excuse me, the water and the capsule, you go ahead and shake it. 
and then you need to let it sit for about 10 minutes before you read it. Now the phosphorus or the p-test is done the same way. You simply take some of your water, fill it into the chamber and add the blue the contents of the blue capsule. Shake it and let it sit for 10 minutes. The phosphorus is also very important for our garden because it allows plants to form new tissues and they need it um, during the process of cell division. So it's really important that we are aware of what levels of uh, phosphorus are in our soil. And lastly, we're gonna do the K test or the potassium test. Um, the potassium is necessary for the flowering and the fruiting of our plants. So we definitely wanna know that we have enough of that in the soil so that our plants can produce fruits and vegetables for us. Now one of the things I really appreciate about this brand of soil test kit, the rapid test, is that based on your results, you can look at the leaflet and figure out what amendments you need to add to your soil in order to get it within the proper levels. So looking at my nitrogen test, if I did perform it correctly, it looks like my soil is actually very deficient in nitrogen. So that will be corrected right away. And the phosphorus, I'm gonna say it's also deficient. Nothing's really looking good right now. <laughs> Let's check out the K. Uh, I'd say deficient. <laughs> so it looks like I have a lot of amending to do, but that's fine. It's all part of the fun of gardening and the joy of learning more and more about our gardens as time goes on. So that's it guys, I, I really hope that you will watch this video and get some confidence to go ahead and test your own soil. I know I had put it off for about four years to be honest with you. I was never able to successfully grow the blueberries but now I'll be able to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link below to this um, soil test kit. It cost me about $14 but I think in the long run it is really gonna save me a lot of money because I'm not gonna be killing my plants that I'm buying from Home Depot and Lowe's and wasting my money on buying amendments that I don't need. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave me a comment below. If you enjoy um, saving money, making your home into your sanctuary on a budget, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, Home Sense with Nell. And I'll see you next time.